right? My dad, come on, Deb, let's go to this house where a bunch of elder women, and they come out to the room, and my mom's like, okay, you know, hands them, hands me to them, and they're like, oh, the ugly baby, and just has this red lipstick on, bright red lipstick, starts kissing me all over, as they walk out of the room, they're like, oh, the ugly baby, the ugly baby, so ugly, and walks into another room, and my mom starts crying, he's like, Brown, why are they calling my baby ugly? He's like, what is the deal? He's like, no, 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 you don't understand, like, the reason they're doing this is because they, they know that he, that they, they feel like he's such a handsome baby that they don't want the gods to come down and take him. So they're covering his face with all this, with all the lipstick and telling everybody in the gods how ugly this kid is so that they don't come down and take him, you know, and that's, that's how I got my middle name. And, and from, you know, from then on, it's just little stuff like that, that, you know, will be, unfortunately will be lost throughout the generations, you know? So that's how I got my middle name and it's Ku'u Ali'i Aloha. Well, I'm not gonna try to pronounce it. I will pronounce the handsome baby, six foot seven, Travis Brown. The handsome baby is now six foot seven inches tall and one of the best fighters on the planet. So Travis is here for about 25, 30 minutes. If you don't know the drill, we have microphones set up on both sides of the stage. Actually, we're gonna direct you to this one over here while we work on that one. So feel free to come, grab a microphone, don't be shy. Travis Brown is known to take questions of all kinds up here. So uh, feel free to fire away. While we're waiting for a question, I do want to get to your fight coming up, uh, UFC 181 in December. But first, I want to ask you about this main event. Because Rory McDonald here tomorrow night is about a 4-5-1 or five to one favorite against Tarek Safadine. I think it's a more competitive fight than that on paper. I understand why Rory has been installed as a prohibitive favorite. But just want to get your take. How, how do you see this main event playing out? Yeah, you know, um, is this thing on? Yeah, we're good to go? Good to go? All right. So, um... Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a great fight. You know, Tarek uh, Safadine, he's, he's a beast, man. He's so powerful. He has that quick twitch muscle that a lot of fighters might not have. But I'll tell you, Rory McDonald knows how to stifle those guys, knows how to answer those guys or, or that problem. He knows how to answer it. So it's going to be a tough fight. And in this sport, with how explosive uh, Safadine is, you just never know. You know, it doesn't seem like there's really any dimension of mixed martial arts that Rory McDonald is lacking, you know? I mean, when I think of the modern-day mixed martial artist and a complete mixed martial artist, Rory McDonald is really one of the first names that comes to mind. And I give Safadine a lot of credit because not a lot of welterweights are calling out Rory McDonald, wanting to fight him, never mind here in Canada. And this is a fight Safadine wanted and, I guess, asking you shall receive, you know? Yeah, you know, when you're a, when you're a fighter and you're trying to come up in the ranks, you know, you're gonna look at the guy who's ahead of you, and that's who you gotta fight. That's who you're gonna to wanna to have to. Fight. You're gonna to have to want to fight yeah. in order to get a name, get that number next to your name, you know. And um, he's he's the guy that's ahead of him. And I think we can all agree it's about time Rory McDonald found himself in a UFC main event right after ten UFC fights. Yet. And I'll and I'll tell you, I'll tell you, Rory McDonald is scary. Oh, like, no doubt not, about it. Not, not just in the cage. But there's something about that dude when you're sitting in the back with him, you just kind of want to do one of these things when you're sitting next to him. Yeah. It's like he's that guy that you just don't, you know, he doesn't yeah. laugh. He's very stone-faced. And I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm kind of the opposite. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, looking good with the TJ Grant style beard tonight. I'm sure we all appreciate that here. I don't know if he, if I have his style of beard or if he has my style of oh, beard. Okay. I'm just saying, just saying. I know he's your man, he's your local yeah. favorite, <laughs> but I'm telling you, my beard is bigger. <laughs> bigger beard yeah. usually wins. Awesome, well, I'll keep my question on the same theme as bigger. I think the whole sport is like you, It's it's gotten as big as it can to the point where maybe if it did expand, there's going to have to be something else. What I'm talking about is weight classes. I think there should be a, 170, a 165, a 175, maybe a 190, 95, maybe something in the mid-low 200s. Uh, what, what do you think about that, and where would you like to have that dividing line that you think would uh, 
M make it along the lines of where you'd either be a, a heavyweight or a super heavyweight. Well, I'll tell you, um, in regards to like having almost like a cruiser weight, I guess you would call it, a heavyweight up to 265 and maybe have a breaking point at like 230, you know, and then having 205 or something. Um, as far as the, the, lower li the lower weight classes go, I think they're set up just fine. Um, as far as that, having kind of that cruiser weight or that, that break right in between the heavyweight, I don't think there's enough athletes for it. Honestly, and, and personally, I like fighting these big monsters at, when I'm weighing in like high 230s. So I, you don't have to be huge to, to fight these heavyweights. I mean, I'm, I'm a tall guy and I have, you know, big bone structure, but I weigh, my, my, the, where I feel the best is at like 238, 237. And that's a small heavyweight if you think about weight size. That's exactly what Kane said to me in Montreal is, it really doesn't matter to him. He feels he can take down and beat up anybody. Yeah, I'm world. just here to kick ass and take names. You know what I mean? Awesome. I don't care how much you weigh. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, do you fight, are you happy that a guy like Alistair Overeem, after he came back, got a big win, had a chance to call somebody out? He almost kind of left you out of the picture. He started calling out Brock Lesnar instead of asking for another ass whooping from Travis Brown. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, when... When you get beat like that, it's hard to ask for that same fight back, you know? And, I mean, it is what it is, you know what I mean? I mean, I went in there and I took his best and I came back and I knocked him out. And I'll tell you what, I met Alistair and, like, you know, he's at Jackson's and stuff and he's a nice guy, you know what I mean? We shake hands, we talk, but I'm telling you, like, why, why would you want that fight back? It doesn't make sense. Thanks a lot. You know, you are looking pretty lean right now. What are you weighing these days? I'm like 242. Yeah, right on that yeah. fighting weight. I mean, I feel like there may be some light heavyweights that have a hard time cutting down to 206 that would yeah. like to see a division there. But I think you hit the nail on the head. There's probably a lack of bodies, even though you have that, you know, 60-pound gap. How many guys would fill that division? Yeah, but I'm telling you, like, my mentality is it's the heavyweight mentality of, right. of I don't care how big you are, you're going to fall. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't matter. Because I could weigh 220 pounds, but I'll still go kick the crap out of a 260 pounder. It doesn't matter to me. Right. You know what I mean, it's about mentality. And these guys, a lot of these guys, and I'm not calling anybody out, not anybody in particular, but there's a lot of whining and crying going on about these lighter weights, about how much weight they gain after the weigh-ins and how much weight they have to cut and all this kind of stuff. And you're crying like little babies. But, man, talking about pound, a pound, two pounds, I'm fighting guys that are like, 40 pounds heavier than me. Give me a break. Put it away already. I mean, are we are we fighters or what are we here? You know what I mean? Are we divas or are we fighters, you know? I live for that. How you doing, Travis and John? Thanks to, for UFC coming to Halifax. It's about time because uh, they've been all over tattooed. Canada, man. Yeah. Halifax, East Coast. We you rock out it. here, man. Like, big yeah. time. We rock out here. It right? is about time. This, this man I right here is you. dedicated. He got a UFC tattoo of Halifax on his arm. Yeah, I got it like three days I mean, ago. Right. Hey, we're good that to go. says it all right there, man. Right? Wow. My question, Travis, is I've watched you fight for a long time. I watched you knock out Gonzaga. I watched you knock out Overeem, Josh Barnett, and these guys. Tough guys. And my question is, how bad are you going to knock out Brendan Schwab? Because I don't think he's got a chance, but not against you, dude. I'm telling you, man. I appreciate that, but, you know, honestly, I don't want to knock him out. I want him to feel what it feels like to go three rounds with me. And I'll tell you, you know what okay. I mean? Like, I'll, I'll tell you right now, this guy, like, a lot of people don't rub me the wrong way. But opinions are, opinions are like assholes, and you need to keep them to yourself. And that's exactly what he needs to do. Thank you. You got one more? Uh, no, I just got one more, one more thing to say. Uh, Safin is going to beat McDonald really bad tomorrow night by kicks to the legs, man. I'm sorry, bud, but it's going to happen. You were a crowd favorite, and then all of a sudden the opposite. <laughs> yeah, that's Security, not... can you go help him, please? <laughs> He's going to need help. Walking out of here. Go ahead, sir. Uh, yes, uh, so I uh, know... Uh, you have a collegiate career in a basketball. Now, you've seen a lot more fighters in the past who've had football backgrounds. Obviously, Brandon Chop's a perfect example of that, playing for the Giants, if I remember correctly. Now, does basketball or other sports, like, or personally for yourself, does having a basketball career help you in mixed martial arts at all? Or? Yeah, definitely. For me, it's helped me keep light on my feet, uh, movement, um, you know, being able to go either back, or forth, back and forth, side to side, have a good stance. 
Um, but most of all, I think, I think what a lot of MMA training does, unfortunately, is it takes away your athleticism. Um, because it's a lot of times it is so a lot of people think about it as forward and back you know what I mean but what basketball did for me was was help make a six foot seven guy move like a welterweight or like a lightweight you know what I mean and and just being able to have that as an option when you need it I, I has helped me in my career so definitely more kind of more reaction time or especially where you're probably more like a center or a small forward probably bound for rebounds probably it would probably more help you on those lines or yeah, I played more of the two and the three, okay. so I didn't play um, uh, center, really. Well, I figured I, like six, seven, you're at least probably a small forward back in your days. So. Yeah, I was a small <laughs> forward, small forward and, and, and shooting guard, power forward sometimes. But um, I, I, that's just how I've always been. You know, I've always um, kind of almost idolized the, the, the smaller, more athletic players. So that's what I... That's what I wanted to play like as a kid. That's what I wanted to play basketball like. I wanted to move and, you know, break guys' ankles and not just, like, bully them around because I could already do that, you know what I mean? So for me, it was the challenge of, of the movement, of cutting angles and cutting to the basket, getting there quicker than they could, being faster than the quickest guy and being stronger than the biggest guy. That was, that was how it was growing up. And, you know, for those that really know me, my family and my close friends, they know how... Uh, I want to say dedicated, I guess, is a nice way of putting it. I am to something, you know what I mean? Like, I, when I put my mind to it, that's, that's what I'm going to do. All right, Austin, thank you very much for answering the question, and best of luck to you in December. Hey, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hey, how's it going? Uh, Travis, just wanted to ask you, what was your most memorable fight and why? Man, you know, um... I'll probably have to say my just my last fight, the Verdun fight. Um, it was the longest fight I've had, and there was a lot of, uh, even during the fight, a lot of self-realization that kind of went on. Um, you know, first three rounds, I, you know, I blew it and I panicked. But you see, in the fourth and the fifth round, I kind of collect myself and come back and, and make a fight out of it. You know, I actually rock him a couple times. and and um, really try to get my feet under me and, and do some damage. But, um, you know, that fight right there has helped me grow so much as a, uh, as a fighter, but not only as a fighter, but as a man, you know what I mean? So realizing and, and taking it to heart with what happened, you know, both inside and outside of the cage to lead to that. Cool, great. And by the way, I hope you kill Shab. Thank you. Appreciate <laughs> it. How you doing, sweetie? to be the one responsible to break Alistair Overeem's chin, or ruin Alistair Overeem's chin. <laughs> to, to do what I'm saying, to be the one that, one more time, sorry. Ruin Alistair Overeem's chin. His chin? Yeah. Oh, it was great. I have, a, I have a pair of boots dedicated to that chin. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good feeling, though. Anything oh. else? How's your day going? It's going good. Good? Yeah. Are you Did coming you? to the fight tomorrow night? Uh, probably. I don't know. Yeah. Good, good answer. We hope so. Okay. It was nice meeting you. You too. Have a wonderful day. Okay. Thank you. Hey, buddy. How are you? How's ya? it going, big fella? Good Where's seeing me? you again. I got to see you. Yeah, that's right. Good to meet Boston Pizza last night. Yeah. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I got to. I'm just wondering what. After, you know, after you knock on an Overeem or a Gabriel Gonzaga, what's your favorite after-fight meal? Oh, man. I think the list is shorter of what I don't eat <laughs> than what I do eat. You know what I mean? I just, I, I am a binger of anything that I would like at the time. I'm so impulsive, it's ridiculous. I, I mean, asked Roy McDonald that a couple months ago, and he said it was Dairy Queen and uh, cheesecake. So. Oh, yeah. All cool, the sweets man. that you can get, all the burgers and yes. grease. And just wondering your take on the GSP saga. Do you think, you know, do you think he is going to come back? Do you think, you know? You're asking me or John? I'm me? asking you. Me? Um, I hope he does, man. He's, uh, he's a great athlete, yes. you know, and he's a great example of um, – of what it takes and hard work and dedication and cool. and um you know i i've definitely looked up to him as you know like i said i was a big guy i'm a big guy and you know we joke around how about 
how I like lumber around sometimes <laughs> and look like Sasquatch. But um, <laughs> you know, I like to I like to watch him fight and and you know not just what he does, but how he does it and how athletic he is is cool. is amazing. Awesome. Thank you, man. Of course. Yeah, best of luck finding a ticket if George St. Pierre returns in this here Canada, man. I think we all sort of fantasize about that night, you know, don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, but hopefully he'll come back. Yes, sir. One of my many fantasies, John. How you doing? <laughs> um, my question is for you. Uh, Anderson Silva's coming back, I believe it's January 31st, fighting Nick Diaz. Uh, I want to ask, uh, who do you think is going to win that fight, actually? Man, that, that's, that's, that's going to be a great fight. Um, you know, as much as I don't maybe agree with Nick outside of the cage, inside the cage, he's, he's yeah, amazing. Me too. Yeah, too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's, he's amazing. He's an amazing athlete, and he brings it. And he's a, like, you know, we talk about being a true fighter, and that guy is a fighter through and through, yeah. um, will never quit, and will always come after you. Um, and then he goes up against a legend in Anderson Silva, who is also a fighter through and through, but has these amazing gifts that he's been able to, you know, bring to the cage and show everybody. You know what I mean? He's the inventor of, of moves and, and strikes and, you know, I mean, the guy's legendary. You know what I mean? So, yeah, for sure. honestly, you know, I think it's going to be a great fight. And I don't get too excited for too many fights. Like, I'm not like, oh, man, I really want to watch that one. But there's a couple of them coming up, and one of them is Daniel Cormier against John Jones. Yeah. And, yeah, right? That one's going to be amazing. And then the other one is that one so far. And I was wondering, too, after the press conference or after the Q&A, can, can we arm wrestle? Because I think it could take you maybe. Yeah, I live for that. <laughs> when, whenever you're ready, handsome. I'm betting on you, so. Easy. Guy. Go over here. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, big fan of both you guys, Travis and John. I think uh, you've been an awesome addition to the company with the commentary and all the shows, too. Um, Thank you. John's a great guy. Did you, did you see him get pushed between Daniel Cormier and John Jones? Oh, no, that was Dave Scholler. My bad. Right, that was Dave Scholler. Sorry. It's not me. I haven't that seen them in the room together brother. at the same time, so I'm not necessarily yeah. convinced yet. I, I had family members texting me, you know, dude, I can't believe you went through the backdrop. And I wrote, hey, bro, it wasn't me. And he's like, dude, nothing to be embarrassed about, you know. <laughs> Go watch the video. I don't have blue eyes, but thank you. Um, I guess a little bit of a weird question, but uh, something that always interested me with MMA fighters is that it's such a unique sport relative to other sports where there's no, you know, oh, we play again tomorrow, right? So when you have that loss, you're sort of, you know, in theory, a few months away from fighting again, and then maybe you're back to where you are, and then maybe you, you go on to where you want to be. Um, I guess maybe just talk a little bit about the mentality of, of getting through that loss and not getting too down and using it as a learning experience and a positive instead of just kind of having a pity party? Yeah, so there's no way to, to not get too down. I mean, if you think about it, and this is, you know, this sport is the ultimate form of accountability, right? I mean, you know, it's not like we're going to go out there with 10 other guys or four other guys or something like that where we can kind of be like, bro, why didn't you do this? Bro, that was you. That's why we lost. You didn't guard your guy or whatever. You didn't make a layup. Okay. But I'll tell you, there's no other way for, for straight accountability than, than this sport. So when you come off of something like that, man, you can't point the fingers. You know what I mean? There's nobody to point them to. You can try to point them at your coaches. You can try to point them at your friends and your family and all this kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, if you're going to be a man and get in there and do this sport, you better man up and understand your own mistakes, you know? And so there's no way to get around that. There's absolutely no way. If you want to be successful in this sport, you have to face it. You know what I mean? So there's no way to not get too down. I mean, I was depressed when I came off my loss to Verdum. I'm not going to lie. I, I didn't even watch the fight for three months, right? And then the first time I watched the fight was with Coach Edmund. And, man, I was up and down the gym. I'm pacing. I'm pissed off, probably cussing most likely, and just, like, ready. You know what I mean? And, and it's just it is what it is. You know what I mean? But, yeah, you got you to gotta look at it. You got to learn from it. And that's how I think you turn it around is that you let yourself get there. You let yourself live there so you never want to go back. You know what I mean? And that's the hard thing about this sport is you don't have 
a guy over you telling you what to do. You know, you have to do this. You don't have to, you have to do that. At the end of the day, I'm responsible for myself. So what I do is I put people in place around me to keep me, help me keep me, help keep me accountable. Um, but at the end of the day, it all comes down to you. And that's the only way that you can progress in this sport. Yeah, a lot of these guys will fake it and try to point the fingers at everybody else, like I was saying, and they wonder why they're not getting a shot. They wonder why they're still in the undercard. They wonder why they keep losing. You know what I mean? They wonder why they get cut. Those are those guys complaining off of all this kind of stuff happening. The guys that are successful in this sport, they, they own up to it and they move forward. Awesome. Thanks very much. Can't Thank wait you. to see you crush job. Thank you, my man. That is a great question, though, because I think a lot of us who can't even fathom what you guys do think about, you know, what's a guy like Dustin Poirier doing today? You know, several days removed from a, a loss that is going to stick with him inevitably for quite some time. It's going to be tough, man. Yeah, and I'll tell you, I think, I think too, it's, it's going to be maybe the way that you lose, too. You know, sure. I mean, you go out there and, and man, Dustin's a warrior and I, and I love watching that guy, but man, he got, he got showed up pretty bad. Uh, you know, facts being the facts, you yeah. know what I mean? And, and he got knocked out pretty bad. And so coming off of something like that, I would definitely take it a lot harder, I think, than, than coming off of my loss of Verdum where I lost the decision, sure. you know, and, and just knowing everything that went on. But, um, you know, that's the thing about these fighters, man. We're emotional. You know what I mean? If anything, we're some of the most emotional people out there. Yeah. You have to be to get in this sport. If you don't, if you're not scared to death of losing, then you need to get out of this sport because you're going to get hurt. Yeah. Well put. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Travis, my question, well, John, first of all, I think you're a great uh, addition to the UFC team. Travis, what uh, specifically was going through your head when Alistair Overeem was uh, dropping those knees on you? What were you thinking about, and what and what made you get back up to your feet? Man, everybody really wants me to relive that moment in my life. Yeah, I, I bet. I'm just trying to forget about it. You know what I mean? Sure. <laughs> Shoot, but um, nah, you know, it, it was something that I never felt before. You know, and uh, Joe Rogan does a great job of explaining it that you don't know what you're getting into until he hits you with one of those. Because uh, at the time, I. I had never, not once, ever been dropped by a body shot. Not once, not in training, not in a fight. I was like, man, I must have abs of steel behind all this flubber, but it didn't happen that way, you know what I mean? He hit it and he broke through it fairly easily, um, and I was on the mat before I knew it. And it wasn't just one knee, it was, that's the thing, it wasn't just one knee, he broke me down after hitting me in the same spot four or five times, and I just didn't know what to do. You know what I mean, it was one of those things where you know, I'm just like, what the hell is going on? This isn't supposed to be happening. But, you know, when I was down there and I was getting pummeled and had nightmares of, by the way, thank you for making me relive it. But, um, you know, the, the, the only thing that I could really think about, man, was, was my woman and my kids. And that there's no, sorry, <clears throat> that there's no way that those boys are going to see see their dad lose like this, you know, and not. Uh, sure, thanks, man. Thank uh, you. Thank you. And I don't know if you've seen my woman, but she's pretty damn hot, and I can't lose her to that, you know what I mean? I got I to gotta live up to something, you know? Thank you. I just remember that night in Boston because the one thing I will say about Travis is not at any point in that fight were you looking for a way out. And you no. see a lot of fighters, when they are looking for a way out, looking for the referee to rescue them, you know, before they get knocked out cold, you were not looking for a way out, and thankfully you were obviously yeah, able and to come back. Yeah, I'll tell you, like, people, there's a little bit of controversy, whatever, everybody yep. has their thing. But when I was getting pummeled, and I was against the, you know, I'll get down on my knees on a second. But I was like this here, and, you know, I'm covering up kind of right here, and Mazzagati's saying, bro, you got to move. You got to move. Are you okay? You got to move. I said, I'm okay. I'm okay. And then all of a sudden, he's like, okay, well, you got to do something. I'm going to stop it. And all I did was do. <laughs> I did something, okay? I just did something. So don't, don't stop it yet. Don't stop it. And he's all, you got to show me more than that. And I was like, come on, bro. You know, you asked was for something, and I gave it to you. <laughs> what the hell? What else do I got to do? I had to get up. <laughs> so. I like to act out my words. Is, I don't know if you can see that or not. Uh, hey, uh, Travis, 
Congratulations. That was great perseverance, by the way. That was, uh, that was a hell of a fight. We enjoyed that, and it was great to see you win that fight. Thank uh, you. And it's great to see, hear you talk about it because uh, that's what we like to see from fighters. Uh, no one, as a fan, no one likes to see someone buckle and, and just kind of give up, and uh, you persevered in that fight, and uh, that's what we love as fans. So uh, that was a great fight and a great performance by you. Uh, my question actually is for John. Um, I was a, I've been a fan for a long time. I used to watch uh, MMA Live on ESPN. I was a big fan. And it's great to see you uh, with the UFC. Um, you're, you're a great addition, by the way. I know you just re-signed for, uh, I don't know how long, Thank but you, I, I saw Thank your you. statement there on the internet. Uh, I just wanted to ask you, like, you kind of, how has your experience been? Because I know you were an ESPN guy that did MMA Live uh, along with other sports, and you've kind of transitioned full-time to MMA. Right. And uh, I'm, I'm a huge fan, man. I think you do, Thank you, you do a great job. Thank you, man. That means job. a lot. It you really know, does. man. You do, you. A, you, do, you're a, you do a great job. Thank and you. I just kind of, yeah. Uh, you see, I planted him in the audience, by the way. Yeah. For all of you. Well, I, I watched the MMA Live uh, on ESPN, and uh, I couldn't get enough of it. Uh, and it's great that you're here full time now. Uh, and thanks for, thanks for coming over full time. Oh, man. hey, it, it, the pleasure is mine, man. You know, I wanted mixed martial arts to be my focus. Uh, and thankfully, you know, the stars align and I was able to take this job. You know, it's been a learning curve for sure and sort of getting to know this fan base and how the UFC operates and everything else. But uh, I feel like any success in life really is rooted in repetitions. And I just remember being so nervous that first night in Nashville. You know, I hadn't called an MMA fight in, in three years, you know, since 2009. And uh, you just have to trust in your preparation and your skills and, and then build up repetitions. You know, now I stand in front of you having called almost a thousand UFC fights. And so you hope that your performance will, you know, get better with every passing fight. You know, I would also say I'm not a lifelong martial artist and there was nothing that, you know, I grew up playing basketball and baseball and ball sports, you know. Uh, I, I couldn't skate. That's why I didn't play hockey in case anybody wants to egg me up here. Um, but, you know, I could not there's nothing I can do to become a lifelong martial artist, you know? So I have to, to, to play to my skills and, and what I feel like I can bring to the table. And you just try to be yourself and do the best you can. So needless to say, that means a lot for you to say that, man. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. And it's good. Uh, half us that are fans aren't lifelong mixed martial artists either, but we're still fans, yeah. you know yeah, what I mean? So, exactly. and, and I feel the same way about yourself. Uh, and you guys are both basketball guys, so props to that. I like to hear that. No doubt, man. Thanks, guys. I, I, I didn't I take it point as guard, as he, he was did. center. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> All right, we got two minutes, so we got time for two more questions, and unfortunately, we're going to have to cut it there. Sorry, my man. Yes, sir. This question is for John and Travis there. Uh, one of my favorite fighters, Frank Mary, is going through some troubles lately. Four fights in a row, is losing. What's your take on where he's coming at in his career? And another thing is, I think, that Travis, that'd be an awesome fight, you versus Frank Mary. That'd be yeah. a really good fight. Yeah, he's, uh, you know, he's one of my buddies. We, uh, we, we train together and stuff like that. And he's, oh. he's, he's actually a really good friend of mine. Um, so personally, I think, um, you know, after his last fight, I, I had talked to him and I was like, Frank, you know, man, like, he, you need to get your body back, bro. Like, he's just banged up, you know? Yeah. And that's why I think one of the blessings that I've had in this sport is that I haven't been doing this sport for very long. I mean, if you think about it, I've been training for six years, fighting for five and a half, and in the UFC for four and a half of those. Yeah. So for me, I'm, I'm relatively new. I don't have the major injuries that a lot of these guys have, you know, like uh, you ask uh, Forrest Griffin to point at something. He's like doing this thing. <laughs> like he came and, you know, he can't lift his arm up. Yeah. Same thing with, with, you know, Frank, Frank Mir. I'm, we're like, Hey bro, let's go. We're going to go run the dunes. And he's all, sorry, man. My knees, my knees a little, a little swollen. And I'm like, whatever, man up. And he shows it to me and it's like this big. And I'm like, what the hell's going on with you? You know what I mean? So, you know, I think he just needs to get healthy, and, and when he gets healthy, then he'll be able to, to use his body like he needs to. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. How you doing, Travis? Good. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Uh, I'm just curious to know who's the most valuable training par partner that you've had over the years and that you've learned the most from? Good question. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, and, and, and I feel like that's a kind of multi-part answer, or multi-part, I have to give multi-answers to that one question. I'm stuttering right now. You made me nervous. <laughs> um, no, but I think uh, as far as like a skill set wise and, and um, you know, uh, uh, just being able to be in the same gym as him, I think John Jones definitely, hands down. His creativity in the gym is, is amazing. And what he's done is helped me instill myself a, a self-confidence 
in thinking about something, watching a fight, thinking about a move, how it could work, but then not only just thinking about it, but making it happen in the, in the gym, practice it enough, make it happen in the fight. Um, as far as like, you know, just going out there and going to war, when I know that I'm ready for a fight, I have uh, guys like Andre Arlovsky, this guy Cody East, who is by, by far the toughest dude that I've ever had to go against, this guy Cody East. And nobody's heard of him, but he's, uh, man, he bangs it out. I know when I go in there and I go three rounds with him, I know I'm ready for anybody. Because it's not sparring with him. It's not like, okay, let's, you know, try to catch each other. It's like, I'm going to kill you right now. And it's like, okay, Cody, calm down, bro. Calm down. This is sparring. I'm your friend. Remember. Yeah. But it doesn't take it like that. Yeah, and just one more quick thing. If you ever, um, after you beat Brandon Schaub, would you like to fight for the title in Hawaii? Definitely. I, uh, you know, after this fight with Brendan Schaub, I'm not looking past Brendan Schaub at all. Um, everything goes my way. I get past this guy. You know, I want to fight for the title. I've never asked for anything from the UFC, from my career, from, I've never asked for a certain fight. For me, I, I can't wait for, to fight for that title. And losing to Verdum has just made it even that much more of a priority, priority on my list. Um, you know, moving forward and, and making the changes that I need to make for, uh, to fight for the title. For sure. Awesome. Have a good one. Thank you. No doubt in my mind you're getting there, big man. It's just a matter of time. It's not if, it is when. Thank you guys so much for your questions. Really appreciate it. If you're looking to kill time over the next half hour, we have merchandise for sale on the third level right behind the sports bar. And, of course, we'll be back here with the fighters at the top of the hour tipping the scales. One more time, though, let's hear it for the man of the hour, Travis Brown. I think you got an arm wrestling. Uh... What's that? 